Hello, I've been asked to present the proportional majoritarian system. The proportional majoritarian system is an electoral system we have developed that manages to be at the same time representative proportional and majoritarian. I'm not saying that the system is a halfway between a proportional system and a majoritarian system, but that it is at the same time fully proportional system and fully majoritarian system, something which is believed by many to be impossible but that in reality was never mathematically proven to be impossible, and it is in fact possible. In other words, being proportional and being majoritarian are a fast dichotomy, and it is possible to have both of the characteristics. Let's see how. This is a classical proportional system. There are different parties, in this case three major parties, and several minor parties to share out the electorate above in the figure, and the parliament in a proportional way below in the figure. If we look at a person inside the blue circle, it will vote for the blue party. Someone inside the green circle will vote for the green party. So far, so good. I'm just putting the foundation so that we can then continue together. But in reality, the electoral is not split so precisely among different parties. There are many people who equivalently would willingly vote for two or more parties. We know this because we have made some tests among the students of economy and sociology at the University of Chieti Pescara, asking them to vote for all parties that could represent them. And more than 60% has voted for multiple parties. So there are out there people who would vote equivalently for multiple parties, and they are even the majority. So let's improve our diagram. We have now expanded our diagram so that the intersection between parties are not empty. The actual form is not important. The parties shown here are just symbolic and do not represent any real party. Voters inside an area with a single color will keep voting just for that color. Vice versa, a voter in an area covered by two colors will vote for both parties. For example, in this case, the third voter will, vo will vote both for party A and for party C, both for the blue and for the green party. And in the proportional majoritarian system, this is exactly what we ask them to do. Vote for all parties that could represent you, knowing that your ballot paper will be used to support one of those parties, and only one, and you have no control over which one of those parties you voted for will receive your vote. Obviously, who want to support one and only one party can only vote for that party. And in the same way, some voters will vote for two or more parties. There is no limit to the number of parties that can be voted. Voters can vote for two, three, one, two, three, all parties, all except one, or even not vote for anything, and this will null the paper ballot. To understand well how the system works, let us simplify the example looking just at the first three big parties, A, B and C. Normally the voters who are in between two parties will have to choose between those two parties, with half going toward one party and half going toward the other party. This, there is even a term in English for people who need to take a decision and who are attracted to two or more options. We say that they are sitting on the fence, and sitting on the fence is considered to be an uncomfortable position. The areas where there are more parties intersect will be more complex, but the principle is the same. This is how the usual proportional system that you all know works and handles people that could vote for multiple parties. And in this case, we obtain this kind of parliament in which no party is able to govern. We see that there are seven types of voters if we have three parties. Those that vote for A, those that vote for B, those that vote for C, those that vote for AB, for ABC, for AC, and those finally that would indistinctly vote for A, B or C. And uh, there are not the same number of people voting for each of those. In some cases there are more, in some there are less, obviously. Now, let us suppose that if we confront the numbers of voters received from A, B and C, A has more votes. 
In other words, more people would trust A than B or C. Obviously, those ballot paper with multiple votes will be counted multiple times. The ballot paper of a voter who voted for A and B will be counted as one vote for A and one vote for B, but it will not be counted as a vote for C. This is not a problem. The ballot paper will be assigned to one and only one party at the end of the process, and, uh, and, the, and that party will be the, the party for which that uh, voter have contributed to elect a representative. So voters will all contribute to only one party, all in the same way, as it is required to a pure proportional system. We say that A received more votes than B and C. At this point, we gather all the ballot papers of the voters that have voted for A. And those people will be the ones that elect the representatives to the parliament who are members of the A party. Their ballot papers will all be counted as supporting party A. And the other parties that might be present in those ballot papers will be ignored. In the proportional majoritarian system, those are electors of A. At this point, we repeat the same procedures between B and C. We count again the votes among the remaining paper ballots, how many votes do B and C has. Know that we must recount because once we assign the paper ballots to A, this will have modified the number of votes received by other parties, and it will not have modified them in, the, in a uniform way. For example, in this drawing, A and B have a bigger intersection than A and C, and in fact, there were, if there was no A party, B would be bigger than C. But once we have assigned the ballot papers to B among the remaining votes, C ends up bigger than B, and so on. So we assign to C all the ballot paper of the intersection between B and C, and C becomes the second party and then we assign the remaining paper ballot to B. And this is the re resulting parliament, in which there is a clear majority, but also in which each party is represented. There are no thresholds to stop smaller parties and no majoritarian bonus to help bigger parties reach the majority. And above all, if we observe the people that voted for each party, we can associate them to their representatives, and every MP elected in the Parliament will represent a group of people pretty much of the same size, something which only happens in a proportional system. And here we see again how people have voted. Now let us go back to the general case without drawing the voters, and let us follow the procedures in which we assign the seats. First of all, the blue party is the biggest and takes all the paper ballots of the voters that have voted for it, independently to what other votes they might have cast. Then comes the dark green party, then the red, then the light green, then the violet, then the yellow, and then the orange. And this is the final composition. Let us compare it with a normal proportional system. We see that in the proportional majoritarian exists a party with a support widely bigger than the other that will give it the ability to govern. And this can be seen in particular in the parliament. Both are proportional, but one is majoritarian and the other is not. There are several things that should be said, but I wanted to explain well the mechanism. The system permits to express the preferences in terms of candidates. It can work on a national single constituency as well as with more smaller constituencies. Even though the biggest the constituencies are, the better it works. In any case, I have personally made some tests with the actual Italian constituencies and it worked very well, giving to the first bigger party the a majority, 54% of the cases. We also tested it on university students and they were enthusiastic of it. I mean, they were really screaming about it, they really liked it. I am obviously available to explain it better in details 
There is also a paper available with all the technical characteristics and the data of the experiments done. Thank you very much.